No, they, they, they farm them. Just they, they raise them and raise they them are for them. scientific purposes, yes. Raise them or kill them. Okay, so there's my chest plate off. All right. So what is that? That's that's you do with cat. Okay, so this is lungs left. Okay, the, the, that's all lungs. All right, there's the heart. Okay. No, it's not. Try not to compare things to real food items. Hang on. We're going to see the abdominal organs next, okay? Somewhere they eat cat, right? Mm, yes, they China. eat cat in some countries. Actually, I'm not sure that China is the right one, although some some Asian countries. Um, Which one eat dog? <laughs> Been to Florida? Yeah. Okay. All right. So now I'm just opening the abdominal pelvic cavity. No. Just relax. All right. All right. And then I'm going to cut from essentially this point so I can show you the, the diaphragm that separates the two cavities. And my, my cat will probably need to be washed out a little bit on the inside. Right, it's got some extra fluids and blood and other materials. All right. Okay, so is that the liver right there? Yeah. We're getting there. That's okay. the liver, this okay. this entire structure. All right. That's pretty big. It's the largest internal organ in the body. <laughs> the skin is the largest organ, period, but it's external. Okay, so I'm flopping the sides back again. I like for everything to flop open so that you can really see it easily. And it's cool. I thought I'd be freaked out by that. Once you get past the smell. Yeah, I'm okay. not to think of this now. <laughs> all right, now I'm going to wash this guy in just a second. You always want to keep track of your blades, so keep them all in one location. That's a safe thing to do. All right. And I'll wash this out in a minute, but I want to show you some structures. Okay. Wow, this is coming out. Now, this structure right, yeah, there's nothing that holds this in place, okay, other than, than muscles associated with this, the stomach wall, all right, and the lumbar vertebrae there in the back. So the abdominal pelvic cavity really doesn't have a whole lot of support. That's why as we age, it has a tendency to pooch out on top of the fact that we build a lot of body fat there. What's that little part right here? Yeah, that's okay, so that's, well, well, that's, that's the same part. for humans, right? Huh? That's the same for humans. That's the same for okay. humans. That's correct. And remember, this is a quadruped, so its belly actually dangles. Okay. All right? Think okay. about it that way, too. Now, this material, you're going to find this is really interesting. Okay, so let's do some structures for a second. This whole big structure here, and again, in a human being, we have five lobes to our liver, all right? But a cat will have a different number of lobes to their liver, so this whole entire organ that you see right here is the liver, huh. all right? All of that structure right there. However, there is this little sac right here. That's the gallbladder, okay. all right? So that itty-bitty little thing is the gallbladder. It's also the reason why they can just go in laparoscopically and get it, because it's right on the surface, right underneath the skin. And so they can go in. They don't have to make big incisions anymore to take a gallbladder out. Oh. Um, now, if we go and we look at this material, it looks pretty nasty. I know it looks pretty nasty. Yeah. But this is called the, the greater omentum. Right? And this is the fat that dangles from the stomach all the way down over the intestines. And you have to pull it very, very gently wow. away from the small intestines. Wow. What you call that again? That is the greater omentum. The greater, the greater omentum. Mm -hmm. Can you go back over so we can write Oh, yeah. All right. So that's the, that's the fat that covers all of the small intestine. Okay? And, um, and it's just kind of like, you know, it's a cushiony tissue. Now this structure that you see over here, these guys can see it a little bit better than you can over there. This is the spleen, right? Spleen. Now in the cat, in this particular cat, this spleen is pretty large, all right? So that's the spleen. What we know is that the pancreas should, right here, and you can see glandular tissue, just like you imagine it in the pictures. It's got, um, you know the thing in the Fantastic Four, how he looks like he's got like little hexagonal squares that make him all up. You know, yeah, rock, yeah. yeah the, the, the guy who's the rock, oh, right? Oh, the thing. The thing. Yeah, the yeah. thing in yeah. Fantastic Four. I'm going you know, cartoon yeah, comic characters here, okay? Yeah. Well, glandular tissue looks that way in real life, all right? And so you can see the actual little, you know, hexagonal um, appearance to it. So this is the pancreas, and it actually comes all the way across. 
okay. and connects. It's real. It's real thin. Yeah, it is real thin, and it connects to the spleen. So the spleen and the pancreas, and then the pancreas will come around on this side and connect to the C-shaped duodenum. Right. So that's the first portion of the small intestine right here. Is this C-shaped duodenum? That's where the pancreatic juices and the bile and all that are going to dump in as soon as digestion starts to, uh, uh, or, or chyme, digestive material starts to move from the stomach to the small intestine. Then once you get into all of, wait, wait, wait for it, wait, I gotta work here for a minute. Come here, you. Right. Okay, once you get into all of this stuff, essentially, Spaghetti. this stuff is all jejunum, right, which is the middle section of the small intestine. And then you get down to this straight little portion right here at the end of the small intestine, this section that I'm touching right here, that's the ileum. And it m meets with the cecum. In a human being, we have an appendix here, if you still have yours, right, at the cecum, right? In cats, they don't have an appendix. But you can see the cecum because there's a tight attachment right here at the ileocecal valve, and it's a C-shaped structure that makes up part of the large intestine. And all of this is large intestine, and I'm sure there's some wonderful dew going there. All right. And this is a female. You guys had already recognized that because of the presence of teats. But you can also tell in cats, they have uterine horns. All right. So these are the uterine horns that lead up to the ovaries. So up here where you have the ovaries, and these are the uterine horns where the babies will be. Because they have multiple yeah. births. And they have one also from this side as well that you okay. can see. Yeah, that's all right. Right? Oh. And that's going to come down and connect to a, uh, essentially down towards the cervix in the lower portion of the uterus. This structure is the bladder, right, right oh. here. Okay. Um, all right, so I'm going to put some of that back together and I'll wash <laughs> this and then I will actually do what's called running the intestine, but we're not done yet. We still have to do all of the upper division. And this is hard. All right, that was easy in comparison. My goal is to get the tongue out by going up underneath the neck all right, and releasing it. Okay, So to do that, I'm going to cut the muscle out underneath the face. All right, right here. Okay. Right, and I'm going to start by, don't whatever you do, don't stick your finger in there. All right, following the inside of the jawline. Okay. Okay. And I'm going to start over here, and I'm going to follow the inside of the jawline. Ooh, or you could stab yourself. <laughs> I don't think I did. Okay. No, 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 I didn't. I just thought about it very hard. <clears throat> okay, inside of the jawline. Okay, and then I'm going to come down through the neck region because I want to release this entire section of the upper portion of this material, all right, this tissue. Okay, so I can feel that. I know there's more action going on right here. You can see the tongue starting to wiggle. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to go up. I'm going to cut the frenulums, all right, which attach the tongue. Okay. All right, see, I can stick my finger through there now. That's good. But I still got this back section I got to get out. Oh. Up underneath, the same way I would if I were cutting a human for an autopsy. Mm -hmm. Okay. There ain't too much to gross you out. Can't be. No, not really. Well, you know, she's used to it by now. Mm -hmm. I don't think I was ever really grossed out by any of it. Ah, really? It's oh, all right. It's beautiful. It is beautiful in many ways. All right, now the hardest part Tuck in that tongue and watch out for those wonderful canines. Unlike us, those hurt. Right? <laughs> you don't want to stab yourself on those. Okay, come on, tongue. All right, so I have the tongue down. And now I want to make sure that I get the pharynx and the larynx out. All right, so I need to get the back part of the, of the GI tract as well and the respiratory region. All right, now I got you. You're all mine. Okay. Now, so I've taken the tongue out, all right, and I'm going to open this up. And one of the things that you should know is that what is the structure that keeps food from going into the respiratory system? Anybody know? Epiglottis. That's right. Very nice. I can actually cut away this little section in the back of the pharynx right here. 
and that right there is the epiglottis. Huh. That little structure right there will flop over the larynx and keep food from going into the respiratory system. It's open most of the time because we're breathing more than we're eating, right? Yeah. <clears throat> but when we do swallow, food is actually going to travel back through this tube in the back, which is the esophagus, all right? And the tube in the front, let me uh, get the uh, trachea visible for you so you can see it. Keep going. It just takes a second. You have to know what tissues you're pulling away. So you want to go kind of slow. There's the larynx. And take it a piece at a time. There we go. See that? Yeah. See the cartilaginous rings of the trachea? Mm -hmm. Right? They're beautiful. Each one of these is an individual cartilaginous ring of the trachea. Behind the trachea is the esophagus, and it's a flat muscular tube. And I can actually separate these guys. And this is the esophagus here in the back. Let me get some of this extra tissue off so it makes it get better. There you go. So that's the esophagus. Right. It's nice, flat, muscular tube. And then this rigid, round tube is the trachea. Okay. Um, you can pull. <laughs> and you can pull essentially all the way out, but we don't want to go too far, all right? So don't do this on yours. I'll do it on mine, all right? But don't do it on yours, all right? But we could pull the rest of the way out if I disconnected the diaphragm and I could pull everything all the way down to the reproductive tract, right? In one pull, okay? I know, and you're set up just like this guy. That's pretty cool. Okay. <laughs> Uh, yeah, there is that. Um, okay, so the esophagus runs all the way back. It runs back behind the heart, you guys. And when you don't chew your food and you swallow a really big piece and it has to squeeze its way through here, sometimes you go, oh, uh -huh. and your yeah. chest hurts. Yeah. Uh huh. That's because it's pushing on I your heart. Uh -huh. All right, so chew your food. Uh -huh. <laughs> That's what all your parents and grandparents have always told you. Uh, that's going to pass through the diaphragm, and then it'll head down towards the stomach, which is this really big structure you can see right here, but I want to wash the inside, and then I'm going to disconnect the intestines and show you those. All right, but let me wash it real quick. Okay. I'm going to take the whole tray for that, so I'm going to, yeah, I don't want to get any goober on.